So this is a surround sound speaker from a Samsung HWK950 soundbar. And this particular surround speaker is the left one and has a model number of PSKS2-1. So the problem with this is it's just it's not powering on. And also the fuse inside the plug has blown, which indicates there's some sort of problem with the power supply. So in this video, we're going to see if we can open this up and fix it. So yeah, let's uh, start by uh, removing these covers uh, on the bottom and the top here, I think, which should reveal some screws, which will hopefully mean we can start getting this thing apart. Okay, with those stickers removed, we can see that there's four screws here on the bottom, and there's four screws here at the back, which we can remove and then hopefully get this cover off. So yeah, let's crack on and do that. Okay, so next up, we need to remove these side panels on here. And in order to do this, we basically just need to very gently uh, prise these off around the edges as there's a number of clips. So yeah, you can run something like a spudger or some kind of a plastic pick or something like that and just try and gently prise these off, making sure, trying not to snap the clips. So yeah, let's get those removed to see if we can uh, expose the screws in order to get this main unit out. So once we've carefully unclipped the side panels, uh, next thing we need to do is remove uh, these four screws on either side and then hopefully we should be able to get the main part of the speaker out. Okay so now that we've removed the screws on both sides uh, we can now simply pull this out very carefully from the case which reveals the uh, speakers. So it looks like next thing we need to do where all the arrows are indicated is take all of these screws out and then unscrew these two speakers and remove these boards here and here and then hopefully we should be able to get this thing open. Okay so once we've removed the speakers and taken all the screws out on the side uh, we can attempt to open this. Now there seems to be glue running all around the case as you can just see it here and it was a real pain uh, to try and get this open but uh, using isopropyl alcohol and just kind of fed it into the crack uh, eventually loosened the glue enough that I could actually split this open. So if we carefully pull this apart we can now see the insides and all we need to do now is remove this whole section. Now there appears to be two screws down here on the right side that are holding it on so once we unscrew those we should be able to remove uh, this uh, whole section and then remove the power board so we can start having a look at what's wrong with it. So here's the power supply board removed from the speaker. Obviously if you're going to work on this stuff yourself just make sure it's not plugged in and also make sure that any of the large capacitors um, have been safely discharged. So if we have a look at this we can quite clearly see there is some burnt marks here indicating that there was some kind of a problem. Now I've done a provisional test and you can already see that um, some of these components are damaged like this one here and there's also a short somewhere in here which is obviously why the fuse was blown. So next thing I'm going to do is start removing these components uh, by desoldering them from the back and try and see if we can locate where the short is coming from. So yeah let's start removing this area and uh, see what we can find. Okay so I've been busy trying to find the source of the short circuit on this board and really this just becomes a process of elimination of just removing uh, the components one by one and testing to see if the short is still there. So as you can see I've already removed a number of components uh, these ones here are the ones that have failed and it's pretty much starting with the fuse um, and then there's this uh, NTC thermistor which is short circuited and then the actual bridge rectifier here has also short circuited and then as we work our way up the board uh, into this bit there was a MOSFET here which is also blown up and then finally there is this Zener diode. So these other components there's um, some capacitors and uh, of a varistor and a, and a resistor, they all seem to be 
checking out okay. I just took them out um, in the process of trying to eliminate it. So yeah, basically what I do, um, I started over here where you have the live and the neutral coming in and was just removing components until the short went away. I noticed once I'd removed all of these parts that on the uh, DC side, after the bridge rectifier, it was still shorting. So I started removing some of the, um, shall we say, bigger components like these ones with the heat sink that obviously show they use more power as they're more likely to be under stress and fail. And lo and behold, uh, we've now got these components. So what I need to do now is uh, get all the numbers off them. I've already started making some notes and then try and source them. I'll put all of the part numbers um, I've found so far in the description. So yeah, I'm just going to see if I can find some parts for this and then we'll start putting this back together and see if we can get this working again. So all the parts have finally arrived in the post, so let's get them fitted back onto the board to see if we can get this thing working again. So here are all the parts soldered back onto the board. Uh, I also ended up replacing the PWM controller, the power I see on here, as I suspected that this might have been causing the problem with the, uh, the MOSFET shorting out. So yeah, next thing we're going to do is uh, plug this in and try and see if we can get the 18 volts um, on the output side. Okay, so we're ready to test the board now. Got the multimeter set up on DC voltage and also have a light bulb connected in series on the live going in. So we can use that as a current limiting device. And also if there is a short circuit, then we will see the bulb light up. So yeah, next thing to do is to power on the board. Okay, so you can see the light flashed, which is good, indicating that that was probably the capacitor charging up. So if we measure across that capacitor, we should see a voltage on here. So very carefully. Okay, so we're getting 340 volts, which is good. Now, if we come to the output side, uh, we should be measuring around about 18 volts. Let's sit this down. And there we go, 17.89. So that's close enough. So yeah, so far so good. So yeah, let's get this connected up now to the uh, main board to see if the unit will now power on. Obviously we need to be careful with this because um, the capacitor um, that's up here will need some time to discharge. So obviously I'm not going to handle this until the capacitors discharged. Alternatively, you can put something like a resistor or even a light bulb across it if you need to discharge it quicker. But yeah, let's get this connected up now uh, to the other board to see if the unit will now power up. Okay, so that's it all now connected up just as a test. So yeah, let's power this on now and see if we can get some lights to come on on this board over here. Okay, so the red LED is good, and now the blue light is on, indicating that it's trying to connect to the uh, sound bar, which is good. So I don't have that switched on. So yeah, it will go into its search mode and that'll probably continue for a few seconds and then it should just go back into standby. But yeah, so far so good. So I think uh, we're probably good to start putting this back together. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will be uh, it repaired. OK, so that's the speaker all back together. And yeah, it was basically the reverse of taking it apart. So yeah, let's power it on now just to make sure it's still working. And hopefully we should see some lights come on uh, when I flick the power switch. OK, so there we have the red LED. And we can see now that the link light is flashing, which is good. So yeah, that went back together OK and appears to be working. So I'll put all the parts that I tested and also a list of the parts I replaced in the description and hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.